Okay, we're going to show how to build um, a waste oil eater. We're going to show that it's uh, not that hard and you should be able to do it yourself. Okay, the first thing we got to do is uh, take this apart um, and separate all the parts. Uh, first of all, you gotta, if you don't have a, a used oil heater, uh, oil burner already, uh, you should be able to find a used one. It's not much of a problem. Uh, this one is a Beckett and the model number is right over here. This one is a AFG, that's a good one to use. Uh, and by the way, this is not the model number. A lot of people think it's the model number, but it's not. So don't get it confused. Alright, you can see we got it. Uh, some of the parts off already. Okay. Um, the oil pump, the oil pump over here. We don't need it, but take the cover off and save the screen. That screen is going to come in handy later on. Okay, so that. This is the shaft. Save that. This is the uh, retention head. Uh, you're going to need a new retention head for the waste oil burn. It's a different design. So, if you hear a loud noise, that means we don't need that part. Um, this is uh, the transformer. We need this. We need these parts here for the air. Okay. Uh, okay, let's take out the nozzle. Okay. There's a nut. Definitely save that nut. Take this here. Alright. Uh, some of these parts we need. Definitely need. Okay. Let's grab a screwdriver. And let's take uh, uh, these nozzles. One, two. These we definitely need. This we do not need. There's an Allen screw in the bottom that holds this uh the support to the this is the fuel line on the old heater, but we're gonna reuse it as the air line. Okay, there's an Allen screw that holds it on the bottom. Okay. We're not gonna use this no more. Take this off, save this, save that. But you might want to take the shield off. It's just gonna get in our way. You might want to save screws anyway. Okay, so we got that. All right. Okay, so we're back. Okay, we got all the parts here cleaned up and ready for assembly. Um, everything here is left alone except for uh, a hole drilled here for the fuel line. And a very small notch made over here for the wire. You'll see later. Okay, first thing we should do is uh, get the um, the heater block uh, assembled and ready to be installed into the blast tube. This is the heater block, and these are uh, the parts that come with it as a kit. Um, you'll see where they, where they all go. Okay, uh, first thing, let's get these parts here. So these are all the old parts from the old nozzle assembly. First thing uh, you have to do is um, you have to grind this notch over here. This is one of the very few modifications you have to do. Is actually just two, three, one. Grind this, the hole, and that small notch. That's all you have to do to install this uh, whole kit. Make a little notch here so it clears here. Get the air tube like that. Screw it down. Now when you tighten it up, it's got to be at 90 degrees. See right here? 90 degrees to the block. Okay, make it nice and tight. Take the new set screw here. And uh, tighten it and install it. This uh, snug it up a little bit. Okay, next thing, the nozzle. This is a siphon nozzle. Um, this, they, they come in different sizes. You know, it all depends on how hot you want the flame to be. Uh, okay, so let's install it. 
we need to put some anti-seize compound on it. The reason why, because whenever you have a metal pot going into an aluminum pot at high temperatures, there's a possibility that it might seize on. The anti-seize compound will eliminate that. Just get a little bit, put it on the dreads, nice like that. Make sure you don't get it uh, on the inside the uh, the air bleed pot, because uh, it might clog you up. And also, there's an O-ring here. You want to lubricate that O-ring. Very important because when you screw it down, you don't want to catch and bind. If you don't have any uh, oil, uh, you can put some dishwashing fluid to work fine. Okay, screw it into the nozzle. Get a 5 8 ratchet, ratchet or a wrench and just snug it up. Okay, next thing, the heater. This is the heater. Put it in. There's a little set screw here. And, uh, Just snug up just a little bit, uh, so uh, just to hold it in place. That's it. You don't want to damage. These are the electrodes. Okay, these electrodes have to be adjusted. Best way to do that is. Take these uh, the tip of the electrodes, make it flush with the um, tip of the nozzle. Okay. Then get yourself a 5/8 socket, put it on like that. Then you come down at the same spot. Take it out. Make sure everything's good. And snug it up. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, what else we got? We got everything here. Yes, we got everything. Okay. Ready to install the um, the heater block assembly into the blast tube. Okay. Now, uh, when the best when you put this in, um, like I said you have to make a hole over here. Uh, the the fuel line and this air tube kind of like sets everything up in there. So. Um, when you set this in there, the best way to set it up is have this nozzle uh, sticking out like about a quarter of an inch. That'll work out fine with most retention heads. This way everything fits uh, fits uh, snug, fits it right. Doesn't have to be perfect, but um, best way to measure that hole is to <coughs> get this T square like this, go like that, and then you'll see it right in the middle of right here. And then when you put this here, don't forget to get that little qu uh, extra quarter inch in the front. Draw a line. Then you put the piece in there. You make a horizontal line, and then you drill a hole. Uh, this is a three-eighths diameter. Make make the hole like about a half inch diameter. Put a little extra clearance. This way you don't kill yourself. Okay. And then one more thing. Um, these electrodes here. Most of the times, um, when everything is installed, uh, and you close this coil over here, the spring should sit like here. Uh, sometimes it's going to be a little bit forward, and you have to put these extensions on, right here. The reason why that happens is because on this uh, new assembly, it, it sits forward compared to the old assembly, where it's back about a... Uh, about a half inch or something, you know. So check it first. If it fits fine and the spring fits all the way, you're good to go. If not, you could take this out, slide that in, then you're good to go again. All right, let's put this in. Oh, one more thing we've got. Very important. Thermal coupler. Um, if you notice, there's two holes here, and the reason why there's two holes is one's American and one's Amer uh, metric, uh, because there seems to be a lot of confusion when you buy these thermal couplers. Uh, sometimes they come in metric, uh, six millimeter. Uh, other times they come American, a quarter inch. And so uh, what I did is I made uh, a hole for each one this way. You don't go crazy. I don't want you guys to go crazy over me. Okay. 
Okay, let's screw this in here. Alright. Best way to install it is this thing is designed for to be worked on. You know, take it in and out pretty easy. Oh. Got another thing we've got. Okay. We should best way to install this thing is to get a wire top. <coughs> want to install this uh, wire tar here, this way it um, ties everything really nice and tight. You don't want them wires flopping all over the place. Get out of here. Okay. Now let's try to put it in. Okay, got that. Let's put that fuel line in right here. Okay, now I've got the fuel line in, hand tight. Let's get this knot, the nut we took off before. Go like this. Hand tight for now. Okay, you want to grab yourself a 45 uh, torque socket. It goes right in this right here. Get a wrench, snug it up. Don't kill it, you know, just snug it up a little bit. Okay, that fuel line's on. Nice to notice about this fuel line, it's um, it's a smooth. It's, it takes a 3 8 rubber hose and it's smooth. I made it around it off and smooth. This way, when you put the hose on and off, it doesn't get chaffed and uh, the little pieces of rubber go inside the nozzle. Okay. Now, the best way to do these wires is, if you notice, this is a quick disconnect fit in. So, this wire, I made a little notch over here. This way, these wires go like this. And then, when you put the coil on, it, it, this, uh, this piece here, the foam, holds everything in place. Okay, this is a quick disconnect fitting, like this, and then you put the other wire here, another connector goes in here, and then you just separate it. Now, this thermal coupler here, you can put quick dis disconnect fittings on a thermal coupler, but it's, a, it's a very, very hard, very difficult, and it's, it's a high failure rate, so we don't want that. So the best way to do that is to take this. This is connected to the controller. It'll be like in this area right here. You're going to have this much extra wire. So you want to like fold it in place nice and neat. And like that, you'll see everything fall in place. Okay? And this way when you uh, have to remove the nozzle, you just loosen everything up and you'll pull it out. It gives enough room to work with. And uh, if you have to clean it, you could probably you could leave, either take it off or you could actually just leave it on, take everything apart and clean it. Whatever works for you. Okay. So that's all you have. That's you have it right there. Uh, you got the nozzle assembly all installed and wasn't that hard. Okay, that's the heart of the system. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, next thing we got to do is put the accessories on. Oh.